Hi, I'm LA and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Daniel and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Bill. I've been a professional baker for over 10 years. Today I'm gonna to be making a vegan cake. There's lots of rum, lots of coconut, but no dairy. I have recently discovered the amazing world of plant-based nutrition. So I'm making a Japanese matcha crepe layer cake. Basically, it is a cake entirely made of crepes that looks gorgeous, and you can definitely post on Instagram when you're done. I love layer cakes because the more layers, the more frosting you get, you know? Today I'm making an eat and mess cake. This is actually a recipe that I created for my former restaurant Mimi's Diner in Brooklyn. It's layers of lemon poppy seed, meringue, custard buttercream, and fresh strawberry jam. First things first, the batter. Before I do anything, I love to coat my pans. I spray the pan, dust it with flour. That way, it makes it easier for the cake to come out at the end. First, we're gonna make meringue. We're gonna start by separating our eggs. eggs. I know a lot of people have uh, many ways that they like to separate eggs, but I find the easiest is to just put the egg in your hand and let the white fall right through your fingers. So for meringue, I'm going to start this on a low speed and then gradually speed it up as it gets frothier and frothier. Okay, so eggs are in. I'm gonna add the milk now. But next, I've got some flour, flour, and I definitely got some on the table. That's just gonna go in there. And I'm gonna add my sugar. sugar. So I'm using a lot of sugar. If you are watching your sugar, you can modify this. You wanna do this super slow, let the sugar dissolve. And that's another reason I'm using super fine sugar is because it will dissolve a little faster. That's the last of our sugar. At this point, you can add in your salt. salt. I wasn't like an A student in science class, but I do remember the baking powder and the salt is necessary if you want things to get off the ground. I've got coconut oil, plant-based butter, as well as the plant-based yogurt. Add in my vanilla. Vanilla, add in my white vinegar. And the matcha. It's super subtle and actually just gives it a really cool color. So now that I've kind of finished my meringue, the way that you can tell if it's done is you can take just a little bit between your fingertips and rub it. If you can feel the sugar, um, you should keep it beating a little bit longer. But right now it's nice and smooth, so I'm gonna keep going. So I'm gonna blend this for about two minutes. I love batters that can go right into a blender. It's super easy. Today I'm using oat milk. I think it's so great that we have all these new plant-based options. Years ago, it wasn't that easy, but now there's almost practically no excuse. I'm gonna sprinkle my cornstarch over the top of the meringue and then gently fold it in. You wanna not work your meringue too much to keep it nice and lofty. I don't wanna over mix it because then it'll probably taste like a chewy piece of chewing gum, and I don't want that. So I'm looking for a smooth consistency. Just make sure there's nothing that can give me like weird chunks. So now it's time to pour the batter. We're going to be baking it on top of the cake, so we want it to fit inside of the cake pan. So I'm gonna use the cake pan as a guide, and then flip your paper over so you're not baking onto the marker. And then I'm just going to evenly divide this between the two trays. I'll show you my real strategic plan for how I pour batter. That's a joke, because I don't have a strategic plan for how you pour batter. <laughs> it's okay to just eyeball it. I have baked cakes where it wasn't even, and you know what? After I put the frosting on, no one knew anyway, so there you go. Now I'm going to just take my offset spatula and make this into as close of a circle as possible. The thing about an eaten mess is that it's a mess, so it's okay if it's like rustic and kind of not a perfect circle. You want it to be about an inch and a half to two inches smaller than your circle of your cake because it is going to expand as it bakes and you do want to be able to fit it inside of the cake pan. We're gonna throw these in the oven at 250 for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes until it's like crispy and crunchy on the outside and a little bit chewy on the inside. The batter is done. This is gonna go into the fridge for about an hour uh, while I sit and wait, and then we will go on to baking. Now it's time to bake. And by bake, I mean make so many crepes, your arms are gonna fall off. I've got my batter in my two pans and the oven set at 350, so let's go. While the meringue is baking, we're gonna focus on making the batter for the actual cake. I'm going to add in my room temperature butter and my sugar with my lemon zest to sort of really kind of pull as much out of that lemon zest with the oils as I possibly can. So this cake is very labor intensive. It basically takes 25 crepes I'm about to make. And the only reason that I know how to make crepes is because of the pro versus home cook episode that I did with Frank uh, where I made galettes. Come on. Literally the whole process is gonna be just switching between butter, batter, butter, batter, butter, batter, butter, batter, until all of the batter is gone, and then you're gonna have a ton of crepes that are gonna be turned into a cake. 
First one never comes out pretty, but we're gonna see. Frank, I'm sorry. Rosemary, I'm sorry. I don't even know what to say about that. The next one will be better. Don't worry, we're gonna scratch this and we'll move on. It's okay. So we're looking nice and fluffy and pale here with the butter and sugar. I'm gonna add my eggs in roughly one at a time. I'm just gonna whisk together my dries. I've got my salt, poppy seeds, baking powder, and then we're gonna add it all together. Just let that get sort of incorporated and then go ahead and add in the rest of the milk. So, crepe number two. Happy thoughts. Cooking these for a shorter amount of time actually maintains the green color, which is nice. So there's no like weird brown spots or anything. So the cake looks more visually appealing for your Instagram post. <laughs> Bam. My cake batter is done. I've got two nine inch cake pans and two parchment rounds. I'm just gonna divide this evenly between my two cake pans. All right, so I've got these cakes. They are ready to go. I am gonna do my quick little toothpick test to make sure they look great. It's Craig 25. This is the last one. We're so close. When you finally get to the 25th layer, it's like, hallelujah. Like in Shawshank Redemption, when they finally make it out and then just like crying in the rain. It's like that, except for you're over a hot pan looking at green crepes. And this is the last one you're making. So I've got the baked meringue. It's totally cooled. I'm just gonna gently take this and nestle it down into the batter. I'm gonna go put those in the oven. So I have some coconut rum. Shout out to my Caribbean people. I usually say pour an ounce, but you know, who's really counting? And brush it right into the cake to make sure that everyone gets a nice bite of yummy cake and tasty coconut rum. The crepes are done. 25 gorgeous green crepes that even Shrek would be proud of. They look delicious, they smell great, and now it is time for the filling. So I'm gonna let this cool completely and I'm gonna go ahead and start making the frosting. So the filling for this cake is actually broken up into two parts. I've got a fresh strawberry jam and a custard buttercream. We're gonna start with the strawberry jam so it can get cool. So the pectin calls for a half a teaspoon of calcium powder to a half a cup of water. Give it a little whisk and I'll set that aside while I do my strawberries. I got my heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna slowly kind of just sprinkle in some powdered sugar. I'm whipping this thing until I see some stiff peaks. I want some volume to this. So I'm just going to haul these strawberries, rough cut them, and then I'm gonna give them a light mash. So I've added my pectin to my sugar. I'm just gonna whisk these together. Two teaspoons of calcium water. I'm going to simmer this for about 15 minutes, bring it up to a full boil before I add my sugar in. So let's start with the vegetable shortening, as well as some vegetable margarine, and then with our trusty mixer, I'm gonna just start beating until it's nice and creamy. That looks really good. This does all the work for you. Way easier than crepes. So our fruit has really started to fully break down. I'm gonna add the sugar and pectin mixture into here and I'm gonna stir vigorously so we don't get any clumps of pectin. So now we're just gonna bring this back up to a full rolling boil and then the pectin should be set. Here's our jam. You can see that it's starting to gel already. I'm gonna go put this in the fridge. So for the second half of the filling for the cake, it's going to be custard buttercream. I've got a pound of soft butter. Just start to beat that, get it loosened up. I've got two pounds of powdered sugar. sugar. Add the soy milk. I'm gonna add the vanilla extract now as well. We're just gonna split the vanilla bean and scrape out the seeds. So while this is beating, I'm gonna add in my salt. So now I'm gonna add my egg yolks into the butter. So this is all coming together and it's looking pretty good. You can see that it is so fluffy. That's some good stuff. Filling's done. It is time to assemble. So we've got all of our components. We've got the custard buttercream, we've got the cooled jam, we've got fresh strawberries, and we've got our two cake layers. So I'm just gonna add a little sprinkling of salt, so a little bit of lemon juice. I'm going to cut the fresh strawberries and fold them into this cooled jam. I'm gonna start with crepe number one. That just lays flat in the middle here. So my cakes are cooled. I'll show you my strategy for getting it out of the pan top secret strategy. I literally just flip it over like that and pray that I don't drop it. There you go. So now I'm just gonna add some of this custard buttercream on top. There's no set amount, it's just whatever looks good. Assembly is super easy. It's literally just layering the crepes with the whipped cream. Instead of batter, butter, batter, butter, it's gonna be crepe cream, crepe cream, crepe cream, which is hard to say. I'm just gonna throw some whipped cream in the middle here and then use an offset, offset spatula, spatula to go around and smooth this. I wanna make sure that it's spread evenly all around so that everybody gets a generous bite. I don't like cheap cake. 
Now, when I'm doing this, I'm going to be making a well for my jam. So I'm going to kind of leave a little wall around the outside created by the buttercream. So now I'm going to add some of my strawberry jam into this well that I just created. Make sure you get nice pieces of fresh strawberry. But this is almost like a, like a meditative exercise because it requires a lot of patience, just like time and effort and care. And you have to be meticulous about it because if you're not, it could come out looking really sloppy. So I love shredded coconut. This just reminds me of the Caribbean. It reminds me of the holidays. I like to just get it all over in the middle so that you can have an even bite. I lost track like four crepes ago. I don't know what number I'm on. I don't know what day it is. I should probably call my family at some point. They're probably wondering where I am. So for the second layer, it's gonna be a little more delicate because we can't really uh, flip the cake stand anymore. So pop the plate on top again, flip it out. And then I'm going to gently nestle this right on the top of my cake. Voila, woohoo, look at you. All right, so let's keep going. We're just gonna repeat the step with the buttercream and the jam on the top. And I like to leave it just kind of like rustic and luscious and full and kind of fluffy. This is a mess, so it should be a mess. Even if I mess up with the frosting and it's not perfect, there'll be so much coconut on this cake, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And maybe there'll be so much rum in it, you won't tell the difference either. All right. The end is in sight, I see it. <laughs> it's looking really good. So I am saving this one for the top. This is it. It's a big moment. There's tears welling up inside my eyeballs. Perfect. This is the Instagram cake. This is the cake that you wanna show your friends and family. And you're like, what did you do this weekend? And you're like, what did I do this weekend? I made a 25 layer cake with matcha crepes. What, are you, what did you do this weekend? Now that my cake is frosted, I'm going to decorate it with shredded coconut and maraschino cherries. This is what love looks like. It's really sweet, it's a little messy. The only way to decorate a matcha cake is more matcha. I feel like I need a few more fresh strawberries on top, so I'm gonna cut a few, toss it in the jam, and then lay them out on the top, looking really nice. And here is my vegan coconut rum layer cake. And this is my layer cake. And this is my eaten mess layer cake. It is time to taste. Try to get the perfect bite with all of the components. Okay, here we go. Fantastic. It's <laughs> real good. <laughs> I think all in all, this is light, it's fluffy, and it's delicious. It's so pretty. You feel bad eating it. And then you, you do, and then you don't feel bad anymore. This vegan coconut cake is fantastic, especially for people who are plant curious and they want to go plant-based. You really, really can have a good time baking without eggs or dairy. It's moist, it's yummy. You can taste the coconut rum. This is like a plate of vacation right here. The meringue is so crunchy and salty, and the cake, you got like that nice lemon flavor to it. It's great, I'm really happy with it. Layer cakes can be simple or sophisticated, but always indulgent. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. LA made a Caribbean-inspired vegan layer cake that was simple but delicious. This is beautiful. I love it. She used a plant-based butter, which was made from a process called interesterification. Interesterification is the rearranging of fatty acids on a triglyceride, which is the main form of dietary fat. This process changes targeted characteristics of fats, resulting in a plant-based oil that's firmer with a higher melting point. Ellie omitted the eggs and relied on her plant-forward ingredients like oat milk, which has beta-glucans, a type of polysaccharide that helps emulsify other ingredients. Her oat milk was added last to moisten and dissolve her ingredients. Now that is looking good. Her cake was light and rose because she added baking powder. This created tiny air pockets from the production of carbon dioxide through a process of chemical leavening. This is fast compared to the slower production of carbon dioxide by living yeast as you might find when making bread. It's a science, but not always a perfect science. 
Daniel made a Japanese-inspired cake that wasn't baked, but rather made on a griddle with a thinner, pourable crepe batter. He seasoned his crepe batter with matcha, a bright green grassy flavored powder made from tea leaves. Matcha has various grades and price ranges. The ceremonial grade is the highest grade and most expensive. The culinary grade, while still expensive, is much more suited to baking. Crepes are meant to be unleavened and thin. The height and volume of his layer cake came from his 25 layers of thin crepes stacked and layered with whipped cream, not from the leavening of his batter. Yeah, this looks incredible. Bill made a complex layer cake, including two layers of meringue. Meringue is a solid foam of whipped egg whites. Bill added the acidic vinegar to his naturally slightly alkaline egg whites to bring them closer to their isoelectric point. This is when egg white proteins achieve a neutral pH and are best able to incorporate maximum air. He also had a high sugar to egg white ratio. During baking, the sugar dehydrated and became crispy, resulting in a dry, crisp meringue. During baking, cake batter expands as its temperature increases and carbon dioxide and water vapor is produced. The batter's final structure solidifies when egg proteins coagulate, starches gel, and gluten stretches as carbon dioxide and water vapor escape. Finally, as the surface of the cake becomes drier, caramelization and Maillard browning occurs. Daniel didn't bake at all. Instead, he used a buttered griddle to make his crepes, turning them once they started to crisp on the edges and bubble in the center. This was from water escaping in the form of steam as the batter's temperature increased. Bubbles, good sign. Ellie made a fat and sugar emulsion icing with a combination of margarine and shortening. She also used confectioner sugar. Confectioner sugar is much smoother on the tongue than crystalline table sugar. This is because it's finely pulverized to a very small crystal size. Now that is looking good. Daniel made a simple sweetened whipped cream using heavy cream. When cream is whipped, the milk proteins align to form very thin films around pockets of air. The separated pockets are supported by the cold, semi-solid fat and are resistant to popping and collapsing under the cohesive forces of water molecules. This is why cold cream whips better than a room temperature cream. Bill made a strawberry jam with crushed berries combined with calcium, pectin, and sugar. Calcium strengthens crosslinks between pectin molecules, making a firmer, thicker jam. He also made a modified buttercream with butter aerated by beating, and then added confectioner sugar and a pasteurized egg. Because the egg was pasteurized, it made it safe to consume. Eggs are pasteurized by heating them in the shell in water to approximately 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This is hot enough to reduce the pathogen load while allowing the functionality of the egg to remain intact. Eggs can also be pasteurized using ozone, which is a configuration of oxygen that has the effect of disrupting bacterial cell walls, thereby killing them. Next time you're in the mood for a delicious layer cake, you have lots of options. You don't even have to use an oven. We hope you'll take some of these excellent tips from our three talented chefs.